Today we have to listen Upika Bhavana. According to the principle of grammar, Upika means Upapadito Yodito Ekaditi Upika. as may be appropriate for being able to see and observe things. It is known as upika. That means to note and observe things keeping with equanimity and, and an equally balanced mind taking a neutral attitude without discrimination. However, in the matter of Brahma Vihara, Upika conveys a sense denoting the feeling of indifference without being worried by rejecting all kinds of anxiety You reject wishing others happy by radiating loving kindness. You reject wishing others free from misery with compassion. And you reject wishing them to be able to retain the same state of prosperity as before without diminution. Yeah, in causing to develop Mitta Bhavana, you have to be born in mind as Sabbe Sata Avira Hondu. May all beings be free from dangers, etc. In order to enable them to gain happiness. Also in God's scene, to develop compassion, you should keep your mind as Sabbe Sada Dukkha Mojandu. May all beings be liberated from misery so that beings may escape from misery and suffering. In the same way, in causing to develop mudita, sympathetic joy, you should bring your mind as sabbe sada yata lada sampadito mawi gichandu. May all beings be undeprived of or un diminish in their wealth and prosperity which they have acquired. As regards upika equanimity, all these mental states or all these formations that occur in your mind, worrying about others' welfare should be dispelled. So you should take an indifferent attitude with equanimity. Sabi Sada Kamasaka. All beings are having their individual karma, either good or bad, depending upon their own actions done in the past as well as present which cause to bring happiness or misery, as the case may be. And these actions bear fruits as resultant effects, which they have inherited 
according to the law of gamma. Just as Buddha has said, according to the seed, the soul, so is the fruit you reap therefrom. Do you are of good, we gather good, do you are of evil, evil reaps. What you sow, you reap, you will reap what you sow. So the person who wish to develop upika bhavana, equanimity is to nurture the spirit of indifference to pain and pleasure of others. Looking upon them as being merely, merely subjected to their own individual karma. The inevitable resultant effect of their own actions. If that is so, it would appear as if this equanimity is bad dharma, for failing to do for the welfare in the interest of other people. However, it is not so. On the contrary, it is not at all a bad dharma. You should render assistance as far as possible in the interest of other people by way of developing loving kindness and compassion. Only if circumstances do not permit to help other people or do for the welfare of other people by any means, you should remain indifferent by the exercise of upika equanimity. To remain indifferent, to remain neutral is the best. Take an instance of an accused person who has committed a criminal offense. In such a case, you should develop loving kindness and compassion to the best of your ability in the interest of that accused person so that he may escape from punishment. However, if the court trying the case has passed final orders, imposing a penalty of imprisonment or a death sentence for having found him guilty of the offense, no occasion will arise to be worried about his unavoidable fate. In spite of this, if you get worried over this matter, it would amount to bringing upon himself both physical and mental distress. Only if you can take an indifferent attitude without worrying him yourself, it would bring you mental relief. In the same way, it would be quite natural for you to bear in mind that this incident has occurred as a result of 
his own karma. And that it is only the resultant effect, whether good or evil, which has unavoidably come upon that person. <clears throat> And there is according to the fourth method. Rupa Vajra fourth jhana cannot be achieved by developing loving kindness, compassion, and sympathetic joy. It is attainable only by equanimity, Upika Bhavana. So if a person who has already achieved the tajana through metta, gruna, mudita, loving kindness, compassion, and sympathetic joy, wish to attain the fourth jhana, upika. Equanimity must invariably be developed. There is no other alternative. As such, a person who has achieved the Tajana through the development of Mitta Gruna Mudita, loving kindness, compassion, and sympathetic joy, must practice this Jhana to become proficient in it. After arising from the trance of the Tajana, Yogi should ponder upon the faults of Mitajana and so on. It should be reflected as this jhana being closely connected and conjoined with the innermost feeling of loving attachment to beings, wishing them happiness. It is linked with love or hate. As it is combined with joy and insultant feeling, the fault of it must be reflected upon and understood as root and vagal. The noble faculty and attributes of equanimity should be reflected upon and realized. Imagining that Upika Jana, which views things with indifference, is indeed gentle and meek. It is stated that only after reflecting as such, equanimity should be developed with indifference towards a neutral person on whom there is neither love nor hate. The manner of developing equanimity is what is generally known as Sabbe Sattha Kamasaka. This person has his or her karma as his or her own property. And that it is his or her own fate, his or her own karma to which he or she has become a victim. After Yogi has achieved the fourth jhana by contemplating as such, Yogi should proceed to develop Upika towards a person who is affectionate to him or her, 
and to a person who are hostile to him or her. When radiating his feelings towards an enemy, if anger arises in him, it must be subdued in the manner as prescribed in the case of developing mitta, loving kindness. After suppressing his anger, Yogi should be able to contemplate with a feeling of indifference, putting the mind equally balanced on all four types of person, including himself, thereby accomplishing the equality of Sima Sambeda. After that, the fourth jhana will occur to the yogis. This is according to what has been stated in Visuddhi Mega. In describing the close proximity of the Upika, Beings have only karma as their sole property. These beings having their own individual karma by whose express wish or desire happiness will be derived. Although Mitta loving kindness may be developed and radiated towards a person, may he be happy. There is no likelihood of that other person becoming happy as desire by the person who radiates Mitta. What that means? It means that a man's fate is inevitable according to his or her own karma. How could he escape from misery and suffering? It is not likely that misery and suffering will be removed as desired by a person who develops compassion. That is to say, things will happen according to his or her own karma. And then Mudita, how could his wealth that has been acquired remain undiminished. There is no likelihood of the wealth that has been derived remaining intact without being diminished. What that means? That means that karma is his or her own property and he or she will invariably be subjected to his or her own karma. For this reason, the result of karma, which is seen as actually his own property, is the cause of close proximity as expounded in Visodhi Mega. The statement in brief conveys the meaning that knowledge which relies with satisfaction that only karma is his own property is the nearest 
cause for the development of Upika Bhavana. In this regard, there is one thing which calls for consideration. It is in developing Mitta Gruna, Mitta Gruna and Mudita, loving kindness, compassion and sympathetic joy. Is it not true that one has to develop with a feeling of loving kindness? to cause happiness to others or with a feeling of compassion to cause others to be liberated from misery or with a feeling of rejoicing to cause him to retain his wealth which have come into his possession without being diminished. However, in describing the manner of realizing and knowing by the expression Kamasakata, it is stated that things will not happen according to the wish of a person who is developing loving kindness, compassion, etc. And that it happens according to his own karma. If so, there is room to think and a question may arise as to whether it would amount to saying that there is no beneficial result by letting loving kindness to be developed or rather by developing loving kindness, etc. There is an answer to it, and that is, if there is no really serious unwholesome gamma, immoral actions and their effect, Benefits can be derived in commensurate with the strengths of loving kindness, etc., which is developed and radiated. In any case, much as one may wish to have the full accomplishment of his desire, it cannot be completely fulfilled. An example may be cited on how it happens. Parents wishing their children to be well and happy, always look after them, and instill in the young minds both spiritual value and moral value, providing them with everything they need. Despite their efforts to see to their children's safety, health, and comfort, some children who are inclined to do what is improper will not grow up in the way their parents might wish them to be since they are subjected to their own karma, which happens under different circumstances. As things would happen under unavoidable circumstances, it will be unwise to say that there's no need for the parents to bring up their children in the way they would consider proper, be it as it may, parental care and attention, 
must be given to their children who are stay immature. Generally speaking, it would bring beneficial results. In achieving advantages by developing loving kindness, though beneficial results which may be derived fall short of the advantages received by the children from their parents, it would be advisable to develop loving kindness. Person who received loving kindness showered upon them might not have benefited as much as the person developing loving kindness would have expected. However, merits will be gained in any case for having developed meta through meditation. On the other hand, in causing to develop upika equanimity, only when feeling of indifference or equanimity can be born as only karma is his own property in possession and things have happened and would happen according to his own individual karma, which automatically produce an effect. The quality of upika would be accomplished. Such being the case, it is of paramount importance to make use of the knowledge of Kamasakata. Kamasakata, the cause in the close proximity of equanimity as a basic factor. Because of this significance, it has been mentioned to bear in mind that nothing happens according to the wish of the meditators as that beings are subjected to their own karma. Beings are subjected to their own karma. So we need to understand Kama Sakata. First, we need to understand the meanings of Kama. The literal meanings of the word Kama is something that is done or a deed. It also means a mental state that is instrumental in doing the deed, good or bad, wholesome or unwholesome. So technically, karma means the mental state which arises in the mind when people do some deed. Whenever there is a good deed or bad deed, there arises in the mind this mental state and this mental state organize the other associated mental states and also engage itself to the object. So that mental state is like a chief pupil in a class who study himself and also encourage other pupils to study. 
In the same way that mental state acts upon the object itself and also encourage or organize the other mental states arising together with it to act on the object. That mental state is called Chitana in Pali. Chitana is translated as volition. So what we call karma is not actually the deed, good or bad, but that mental state that accompanies or that arises in the mind of a person who does the good deeds or bad deeds or wholesome deeds or wholesome deeds. <clears throat> and as a mental state, it arises and disappears immediately because according to the teaching of the Buddha, whether it is a mental state or a material state, it arises and immediately it disappears. But unlike other mental states, when Chitana Volition despair, it leaves some potential to give results in the mental continuum of beings. Although we cannot say or we cannot know wh where this potential is stored, but when conditions are favorable for that karma to give results, the results are produced. Let's take an example of a mango tree that bears fruits. Before the fruits are on the tree, we cannot say where the fruits are stored, whether in the roots or in the trunk or in the branches or in the leaves. But when the condition comes together, like sunshine, watches, and water, the fruits are produced. In the same way, the karma, which has the potential to give results, give results when the conditions are favorable for it. That is what we call karma. And this karma, as you know, can be good karma or bad karma, or can be wholesome karma or unwholesome karma. See, it is a natural law that karma gives results It follows that when karma is good, then it will produce good results or happy results. When the karma is bad or unwholesome, it will produce bad results or painful results. That is what we call the law of karma, that there is what we call karma of volition, and this karma gives results in the future. So all yogis, should believe in that law of karma. And the law of karma was discovered by the Buddha himself without a teacher 
On the night before he became the Buddha, the body sat down under the body tree and practiced meditation for the whole night. During the middle watch of the night, between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., Buddha attained the Devajaku, supernormal knowledge by which he was able to see beings dying from existence and being born in the next existence. He also saw that a being died from one existence and was reborn in a miserable existence because he did bad karma in the past and another being dies from one existence and was reborn in a blissful state as a human beings or a celestial beings because he did wholesome karma in the past. So during that time or during that watch of the night, Buddha discovered the law of karma. So Buddha's teaching of the law of karma was not borrowed from any other teaching, but it came from his own intuitive knowledge or super wisdom. And it is also said that only the Buddha could understand everything about karma. It is not in the province of even the best of his disciple to understand karma in all its entirety. So if we do not know everything about karma, we should not be disappointed because it is not in our own province to know everything about it. <coughs> there are different kinds of karma. There's karma which gives results in this very life. There's another kind of karma which gives results in the next future life. And there's yet another karma which gives results from the third life indefinitely until you get out of the rounds of rebirths. And the three kinds of karma become defunct when they do not get the opportunity to give results in their allotted period, allotted periods of time. So karma gives results not only in future lives, but it can give res results in this very life also. To understand this, here is an illustration of a thought process, witty, witty chaita, thought process. So there is a mango simile. You need to remember the numbers each of the process. A certain man with his head covered went to sleep at the foot of a fr fruiting mango tree. He's sleeping. Then a ripe mango loosened from the stalk, fell to the ground, grazing his ears. That is moment one. Moment two, moment three. 
and the for the mo fourth moment awakened by the sound. A fifth moment, he opened his eyes and looked. Another moment, stretching out his hands, he took the fruit. And number seven moments, squeezed the mango. Number eight, smelled the mango. And ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteenth. He ate the mango with enjoyment. And number sixteen, seventeenth. Salute the mango. Then he went to sleep. So it is the commentary. Give this uh, simile. And there are 17 thought moments or 17 chaita when an object is presented to the mind through one of the five sense door, as in the case of this mango simile. So we have the life continuum, Bowinga, that is first moment, second, third moment. That is a type of undercurrent or inactive consciousness. That is what called really Bowinga. Bowinga moments, Atita Bowinga, Bowinga Chalana, Bowinga Pichera, that is first, second, that. And then advertin, we have series of following types of thought consciousness sense door advertin. Advertin is what moment? Number four. And then Chakuvinyana is seeing consciousness, number fifth. And receiving consciousness is number six. And investigating consciousness is number seven. Determining consciousness, number eight. And a perception or impression, number nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. How many moments? Yeah, 9 to 15. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. How many? You, okay, again, 9, 10. Yeah, seven times. So seven times, so that is karma. So 9, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A perception or impression. And registering consciousness, that is number 16 and 17, two times. So to, to remember this, uh, can you follow me? Yeah. Uh, life continuum. Boenga moment. First, second, that, and then what we'll call sense door averting consciousness number four, seeing consciousness number fifth, receiving consciousness number six, investigating consciousness number seven. Determining consciousness. Number eight, a perception or impartial. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth. That is seven times. Seven times, yeah. 
and then registering consciousness 16 17 so that is the processing the 17 thought moments 17 thought moment and then you go to boenga again so karma is number uh, karma is a perception or impulsion seven times so that is wholesome or unwholesome karma so the third moments in which karma is performed are seven moments of a perception or impartion and known in Bali as Jawana. In these moments, you experience the object fully and they are the moments when you create karma. So in the first of these seven thought moments, you acquire karma which Getting favorable circumstances give results in the present life. And in seven and the last thought moments of Jawana, you acquire karma which gives results in the next life. In the five thought moments in between, you acquire karma which gives results in the lives after the present and next life. That is from the third lifetime onwards, recording the present life as the, as the first. If the first jawana does not give result in this life, it becomes defunct. If the seventh jawana does not give result in the next life, it becomes defunct. But the Javanas between the first and seventh can give results through every lifetime until you die as an Arahant. So the seven moments of Javana in Bhajan, when you do wholesome or unwholesome gamma are the most important moments in the thought process of the Abhidhamma. In those moments, how we react to the object, either in a wholesome or unwholesome manner, produce results which we will have to be responsible for in the future. So to get the wholesome gamma, wholesome jawana, so what we need to do, we must have a wholesome mental state. So we, we must be inclined to do proper. And then you, we need to choose the suitable place to do merit. And we need to have a good Kalyanamita. And then we need to keep our mind and body in the proper way so that we can do wholesome karma. So this understanding of the law of karma taught us self-reliance and self-responsibility. Because we enjoy or suffer as a result of what karma we did in the past. So whatever we enjoy in this life is actually the result of good karma we did in the past. And whatever we suffer here is also the result of bad karma we did in the past. So we are not to blame anybody as for our suffering or failure in this life. We are not to blame anybody else for our suffering or failure in this life. If we want to blame at all, we can blame our own karma ourselves. 
So karma is one that produces results and says it is we who do this karma, we are the one who causes the result to be produced. So we are the master of our own future. We can shape our future lives in this respect. We are free and we do not have to rely on any other person for our good future because we alone can create our future, either good or bad. When we understand that we alone are responsible for our own suffering or happiness, we know we can shape our future so that we get happiness only and not suffering. If we do not want bad or painful results, we just need to avoid which we give painful results. That means the knowledge of the law of karma will teach us to abstain from doing what is bad, what is painful to oneself, and what is harmful to others. So we can improve our lives here and also we can shape our lives in the future because we know or we understand the law of karma. So evil actions bring evil results, good actions produce good results. So can you follow me? Evil actions bring evil results. Evil actions bring evil results. Good action produce good results. Good action produce good results. It is karma, the planner that implements both evil and good, making us suffer pain or gain pleasure. So it is a karma, it is a planner that implements both evil and good, making us suffer, making us pain or gain pleasure. So we have to stop our discourse for today by practicing Mita Bhavana, Karuna Bhavana, Mudita Bhavana and Upika Bhavana. By practicing Vipassana meditation, by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, continuously and meticulously. May all yogis be liberated from all suffering. May all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future.